It's another edition of the Recruiting Rundown here on Gamecock Central. Welcome in everybody, Kendall Smith and Wes Mitchell joining you here and we are talking all things recruiting in the world of South Carolina. A big game this weekend, the Gamecocks against Texas A&M. Wes, how you doing? I'm good. Matter of fact, this background, Kendall, I believe was taken the last time Texas A&M was in Columbia. Maybe I see the fair in the background. So been a couple of years, but that was a fun one and we're expecting Another fun one this weekend. Great atmosphere to show off to these recruits, Kendall. Yes, my senior year of college. That was very exciting. So hoping for some of that same energy at williams Bryce Stadium this weekend and a whole lot of recruits that are coming into Columbia, South Carolina, trying to land them, trying to impress them this weekend. And I think when you look at it as a whole, West, the thing that really jumps out is the fact that there are at least four guys coming this weekend on official visits that are not committed to South Carolina. So who are those guys and what do you know? Yeah, and we're recording this on Wednesday, so of course, uh, keep checking out GamecockCentral.com. As everybody who follows recruiting knows, lists can be fluid. That goes for official visitors and certainly unofficial visitors as well. But as you said, right now, four guys who are not committed to South Carolina will be in on officials. A couple of them committed to other schools, starting with Jimmy Bryson, who's a three-star guard from, uh, from, from Tennessee but committed to Georgia Tech. Kelton McHale is a junior college defensive lineman. He's currently committed to Liberty, but has gotten a lot of interest and offers from other schools, including South Carolina. And then a couple of local guys, Donovan Murph, as many South Carolina fans already know, from Irmo, reclassed from 2026 to 2025. He will take his much-anticipated official visit to South Carolina. And then another Irmo guy, but at Dutch Fork, Josh Smith, who we've actually – been tracking, uh, I would say, for a couple months here on Gamecock Central as well. Josh Smith, a linebacker, he's going to be taking his official visit too. All of these guys are prospects that South Carolina is in the game with, Kendall, and all of them are prospects that South Carolina has really, I would say, prioritized down the stretch here. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about these local guys, Donovan Murph and then Josh Smith. South Carolina has had a lot of success with guys that are from the state of South Carolina, played high school football there. So where does South Carolina stand as of right now on October 30th with both of those players, Wes? Yeah, Ken, I think they're in, I would say, good, if not great shape with both guys. And so it's kind of at the point where they do want to go through the process. They want to go through these official visits this weekend and sort of answer all their detailed questions, I'm sure. But you look, you know, you mentioned in-state recruiting for South Carolina. I would say it's on the rise for the Gamecocks right now. They already have Jordan Gidron, who's another local prospect from Ridgeview. He reclassified from 2026 to 2025 class, is committed to South Carolina. He's actually one of the committed guys who will be on campus this weekend on his official visit. So you're going to have all those local guys on campus together. Murph, of course, already announced the reclass. Unlike Gidron, he did not announce a commitment. Wants to go through the process a little bit, but I've felt since that day that he reclassified and even before that that South Carolina was probably the favorite here. Clemson's been involved. Alabama's been involved. Some other schools, of course. But I really think Carolina – has put themselves in a good spot. And with Josh Smith, this has been kind of a little bit of a South Carolina Ole Miss battle. He's been at both schools and uh, really, I think, has grown up pulling for the Gamecocks. Like, I think this is an offer he coveted. The offer did come a little bit later in the process, so I think he just wants to be completely sure that this is where he wants to be. Listed as an edge on on three, but just to be clear, he's 100% a linebacker for South Carolina. That's the spot he sort of transitioned to at Dutch Fork his senior year, and has had a big year there. So both of those guys, I would say, Kendall, if everything checks out this weekend, if everything goes to plan, if you're a Gamecock fan out there, you should feel pretty good about where South Carolina stands with both those players as they continue to, I would say, check a lot of boxes with their in-state recruiting. So we've got the official visitors that are coming this weekend, Wes, but a lot of unofficial visitors that are coming as well. Any names that kind of stand out to you at this point in the week? Yeah, you know, it's a good question, Kendall. I I think you start to look at that list and you start to see 2026 guys, 2027 guys on there as well. Um, We're going to have a full list, we hope, as the week progresses on GamecockCentral.com. So I would point people to that. But also, I would say lots of the committed guys are going to be on campus too, which I, I think is always good to go ahead and get those committed guys on your campus so that they can kind of 
be around the guys that you're recruiting as well. So uh, I think anytime you can bring everybody together, that's a great thing. And I, I look ahead to just the in-state recruiting as well for those coming classes. A bunch of those guys, Kendall, have all been on campus, not just once, not just twice, but multiple times this year, including probably this weekend as well. So I, I think they've really just laid that foundation for guys that I believe they're going to have a great shot to land down the road. If you're watching the recruits come out on the sidelines on Saturday, you're going to start to see a lot of familiar faces and familiar name tags that you've seen a lot of other games this year. Okay, so we talked about that Texas A&M game a couple of years ago. You remember it. I remember it. I'm sure so many people watching the recruiting rundown right now remember that game, how great of an atmosphere it was at williams Bryce Stadium, a great recruiting weekend for South Carolina. And, you know, when we talk about a lot of these recruits, it's talking about South Carolina going against schools like Ole Miss or Georgia or Ohio State or these big time programs that South Carolina has to beat out to land these top ranked recruits. So how do you think, Wes, that South Carolina can stand out on big weekends like this besides the obvious of winning the game? Yeah, I think just the night game atmosphere at South Carolina is uh, borderline unmatched. And th the record has even shown that. The, the last couple of years at night, williams Bryce Stadium is special. And I do think, Kendall, it helps just for it to be a better experience for these recruits. There's no rushing to get there. Uh, now, you might deal with traffic after, but you're not rushing through traffic before the game. You have a little bit more time to spend around the staff really to particularly spin around like that support staff, the recruiting staff, and all the different people that help make this thing click behind the scenes. So there, there's a little bit more time to just enjoy it, take in the entire atmosphere. There's even going to be a flyover during Gamecock Walk, which I, I think is something I've never heard of happening at South Carolina. So that's going to be a cool twist. Most of the time, these recruits leave impressed, leave loving the atmosphere, but there's just something different, something special about night games, and I'm sure South Carolina will lean heavily into that. And, Kendall, you you asked me earlier if I wanted to name anybody that was going to be in. I do want to name one guy because I think this is fascinating. Jalen McGill, four-star running back, in-state, class of 2026. He was a guy we were tracking very early on. Then I, I think we've talked about it here on the show. I wasn't really sure. You know, there was coaching changes at running back. What was happening there? Who were they going to prioritize for that class? Well, they have absolutely prioritized Jalen McGill, and it is paying off. He's been at, I believe, just about, if not all, the home games this year. And so there's, a, I think, a growing mutual interest there between he and South Carolina. And he's another in-state prospect that I think the Gamecocks are gaining ground on and are probably currently the favorite for as well. So that's another – it's just one guy. We'll have the full list later on, but – um, it, it, I think you're seeing to tie this all together, you're seeing a lot of these in-state kids just buy into what Beamer is trying to do. Now, I think the important thing is these final five games, you're going to have the atmosphere. You know that these final five games, can this South Carolina team continue some of the things we have seen them do, you know, in some losses against LSU and Bama, but certainly in the win against Oklahoma and just put it all together and have a strong finish to this season because there's really a lot that is still out there for them on the recruiting trail and being able to potentially continue this momentum moving forward if they can show that on-field progress for these final five games. Well, look, we've seen the success that Shane Beamer and his staff have had with guys that are from South Carolina, played high school football in South Carolina, so they want to continue that. But back to your point, Wes, about the night games, it obviously is a big deal because Lane Kiffin was talking about it just a couple of days ago and how LSU is always getting the night games, and he wasn't super thrilled about that one. So South Carolina with a chance to play under the lights at williams Bryce Stadium this Saturday against Texas A&M. You know it's going to be a big-time recruit weekend and we will keep you updated with everything that you need to know so follow us at Gamecock Central on social media check us out at GamecockCentral.com Wes Mitchell and Chris Clark always do a great job staying up to date with the recruits and chatting with them after the weekend is over to get their feedback on what they experienced at South Carolina so a lot of that content coming your way be sure to check it out everybody we are so excited for this weekend of course for what's going to happen on the field but also on the recruiting side of things as well so we will come at you guys with another 
another recruiting rundown next week, but we thank you so much for joining us again for Wes Mitchell. I'm Kendall Smith, and this has been the recruiting rundown here on Gamecock Central. Have a great week, everybody.